Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Made, and I've got a scenario for you. Picture this one. You look across your work area and you see stacks of partial spools of filament. You know, the ones that just have enough filament on them to keep, but not enough to actually do a full print. So if this hits home to you, I've got some good news. There is a new cool tool out there that might just solve all of these frustrations. And the best thing, it might even save you some cash in the long run. So stick around and I'm going to show you this cool new tool that could honestly save you some money and some space. Now before we jump into the solution, let's just take a minute and talk about these issues and why they're such a pain in the first place. Because whether you've been printing for a long time like me, or just a little while, we all get spools that start to run down and have just a small amount of filament on them and there's not enough that we can do anything with them. And those partial spools cluttering up your workspace, this is the one that hit home the most for me. It's not just messy, it's just like collecting dust on your shelf. Because those filament spools can add up. And also if you're not storing them properly, filament goes bad. And then you have to just toss them in the trash. And I don't know about you, I have racked my brain sometimes trying to figure out, okay, I've got just this little amount of filament, what can I print to use it all up? Now, it's a common headache for a lot of us 3D printing, but the cool thing is, is it doesn't have to be anymore. So let's talk about this cool new tool that is helping me tackle some of my filament frustrations. Filament frustrations, I, I like that, filament frustrations. I'm gonna keep that one. But anyway, <laughs> Sunlu actually sent me this to try out and just give my thoughts and opinions and all of that about this little tool. So, is this thing absolutely perfect for you? Maybe not, but maybe it is. I know it's been pretty handy for me to be able to cut down on a lot of my partial spools that I have. So what is it? It's basically a filament fusion device. And it will just join two pieces of filament together which can be kind of a game changer when it comes to all of these leftover spools that have been sitting on your shelf. So let's jump over to the workshop where I can show you exactly how this little thing works. So here I have the Sunlu filament connector and it comes with obviously this, the unit itself. And then it comes with a little USB cable. So you're either going to have to plug it into something to power it by USB. So I'm just going to get a little adapter brick and then plug it in. Then it comes with a bag with all of the little connector tubes that we're using every single time we're fusing our filaments together. And then the last thing, I 3D printed a spooler. So all I have to do is take my partial spool, put it on this, and then when I fuse it, I just have to keep cranking this and then it'll go ahead and transfer it from here over to here. So by the time I'm done with this project, I'm going to be able to have all of these spools gone and I have a nice full spool of filament. And I'll go ahead and put a link to the one I'm using down below for you. So let's jump a little closer and I'm going to show you how to use this and how you can create all of this into one spool of filament. So once you've got the unit on, you just hit the button to be able to toggle through the different types of filaments. So I have PLA, so I'm just going to select PLA and then hit play on that. And now it'll start to heat up to 185 degrees. And if I wanted to, I could increase that because if I wanted to get it to 190, I could. But 190 should be perfectly fine to heat up this PLA to fuse together. Once you're done selecting it, you just leave it on there for a minute and then it will start heating up. So you can see it's already at 160 degrees and climbing. So this takes about three minutes to heat up and then once it's heated up, it will do a little beep. So while this is heating up, I'm just gonna set this aside and then we can start preparing our filaments. So, so when it comes to the filament, you actually have to snip it at a 45 degree angle. So basically what you're doing is you're going to have it at an angle and they're going to be connecting like this. And that is going to give it more surface area to be able to fuse together instead of just the ends. So I'm going to take my other filament and also cut this at a 45 degree angle. There we go. Then I'm just going to take one of these little tubes and I'm going to insert it into the little sleeve. Then I'm going to take my black and do the exact same thing so you can see how it is at an angle and they're kind of connected right there. And that's all we've got to do is make sure that this is right there in the middle. Now all we're going to do is we're going to open this up and then we hit this little button right here and it's going to pop open the heating element area. We're going to set those joints right over that heated area 
then shut it. Then we'll wait till the beep, open it up, and I'm just going to apply just a little bit of pressure to make sure that it's fusing together. And then once this is cooled off, it will be fully fused. All right. Then the last step is you just want to push your filament down here in this little groove. And this is going to cut that tube. So I'm going to just push it down, then open it back up and then just pop it out there. And what that does is it actually creates a little cut to where you can peel this tube right off of your filament. Now I have a perfectly fused string of filament. So now all I have to do is start winding my filament. And there we go. So now I'm ready for my next spool to just fuse this together and I can keep going here and fill this entire spool. So this tool definitely helps me reduce my waste and get every inch of my filament used because I did realize that you have to connect it in a certain way or you just won't get a good fuse. But you do notice it immediately and then you just have to cut off the little sleeve and do it again. But now that I've covered the basics, let's go over some interesting ways that I think you could potentially use this tool. The first one, which is the most obvious, you can combine all of your leftover spools into just one spool. Like I took 11 spools and put it into one and this is almost a full spool. So you're not having as much waste as you might have. So if you're one of those people that just throw away your filament when you've got just a little bit on it, this might be a way for you to not have any waste whatsoever and you can just keep adding to a spool. Now the second one I think is pretty interesting, especially for you creative types out there. You can create your own rainbow filament which means you don't have to just use a partial spool. Like if you have a few colors of spools that you like, you can combine them, you know, get a certain amount and then snip it and fuse it. And you can get some really cool results, I think, especially if you wanted like a custom rainbow pattern. And the other thing that I think might be handy, but it would take some testing, you could use this for multicolor prints. So you can change your filament at a certain length. So if you go into your slicer and figure out how much of a specific color that you need and then transition into the next color, you might be able to get some cool looking signs and things like that. But I think for this one, it's going to definitely take a lot of trial and error. Or you could potentially fuse this on the fly. Like while it's 3D printing, snip it, put in your new one and fuse it together right there. Like, so it's possible. It might be a little bit of a pain, but it's just different ways that I think you might be able to use this thing. And the fourth one is, honestly, I think the ease of use is worth mentioning because anybody can really use this. It does take a little trial and error, but ultimately I got the hang of it pretty quick. So those are some of the pros, but now let's talk about some of the cons. If you typically paint your 3D prints like I often do, this device is great because I don't care if the top of my 3D print is bright pink and the bottom is blue. I'm going to paint it anyway. But if you're one of those people that don't paint your 3D prints, this might not solve your issue. Unless you have multiple partial spools of the same color, then you're just fusing the same color together and then it might work for you pretty well. Which brings me to my next point. For the best results, you really should be sticking to the same brand or at least the same filament that has the same temperature requirements. Because mixing and matching can kind of be hit or miss and you might not be happy with the results you're going to get. And that's really because different brands of filament print better at different temperatures. They both could be PLA and they both could be green, but one could print a lot better at say 190 and another one's gotta be at 210. So you really should be sticking with the same brand and knowing that you can print them both at the exact same temperature and be just fine. So now let's talk about these little plastic sleeves. I, I am not a fan of them because it just seems really wasteful. I understand why you have to have them I, I just don't like having to keep using them and throwing them away. I wish there was a better alternative, but I honestly can't think of one. So I've really enjoyed this little guy, and I definitely will be putting this right beside all of my filament, and it'll just be living on that shelf. Now, the one thing I have to say is this tool is not a must-have for everyone. If you're happy with your current setup, if these issues don't really hit home with you, that's totally fine. 
But for those of you that struggle with partial spools and want to experiment with color, this might be a useful addition to your toolkit. But one other thing that really isn't a pro or a con is just something I think you should like keep in mind. You can't combine different types of filament like ABS and PLA and put them together. Well, well technically you can, but you really shouldn't because they require different temperatures and it, it's just, it could lead to so many issues with your printer and the filament and your print. It's like trying to mix oil and water. It's just not gonna work out well. So is the Sunlu filament connector going to revolutionize the 3D printing industry? Pr probably not, but is it handy? It, yeah, it kind of is. I don't think it's something that it's for every single person, especially if you're a person that just has a bamboo printer and an AMS. You're not going to have to need one of these because a bamboo printer will use every bit of the filament it has on the spool. But on the other side of that, if you have, like, let's say an Ender 3, this could be very useful because it doesn't always use all of the filament. Because you might run into partial spools and you need to start condensing them into one spool and this will do it for you. It definitely helped me declutter my work area and now I have got... 11 spools on one spool of filament now, which I think is kind of cool. But I think one of the biggest potentials for this is people that are trying to make their own rainbow filament. I could see like having a matte color and then you go into like maybe a silk and then another matte color so you can get some really cool banding and it'll be very abrupt so you could get stripes on a vase or something. But I think this is going to give some creative people out there some options to play with and honestly that's what it's all about in this hobby. And I'd really love to hear what you guys think about this because I'm on the fence. Like I really like it but I don't see use cases for certain people. And you might be one of those people that think this, this thing is not for you. And there might be people out there that are like, I have to get that right now because of just the potential of what you could do with it. But if you have any other ideas of what I could do with this thing, let me know. I would love to hear all of your thoughts and ideas. So I have all the information for this guy down below in the description, and that's pretty much it. I wish you a great day, and I will go ahead and see you over here in this video.